God, this is important. If I had one piece of advice that I could give myself at 20, I would say, steer the course, Nettie, you're doing super. I think I actually did do this extremely well. And that's why I feel qualified to give you advice about your life. And I also feel qualified to tell you that my brand new stand-up show, which is, that's a lie, it's not brand new at all. But nonetheless, it is coming around for its third round in Brisbane, second round in Perth, whatever round in Canberra. And I don't think I've been down to the prison estate yet. Good old Tazzy. I'm going down there, I'm going to plant one on Jackie Lambie. Mwah! Yeah! I love young cock. Young cock. Young cock. And then they'll just sit down and she'll do the rest of the show and I'll, I'll, I'll leave the state and everyone will be like, wow, Jordan has grown his hair very long. Also, he doesn't look anything like Jordan anymore. I like the new look though. So, here's what I want you to know. That goes to my show, but also I want you to know this if you are before the age of 30. If you are over the age of 30, it's too late, give up, your life is over. But before 30, you still have some saving grace, which is, know this, like what I was discussing in a previous video, zero to 18, nothing's your fault. It's just whatever is in your environment, which is going to be your parents and your friends, you are going to be an amalgamation of that and think, uh, uh, too stupid to know what you actually are. This formed cretinous creature walking around uh uh got emo hair even though emo's not a thing anymore because i grew up in gosford uh. then after that ages 19 and up no excuse you and you want to be writing this down what happens to you in the next 10 years is entirely on you you will have reaped what you sowed at 19. When you're 30. That's why you got to start thinking in 10 year chunks. As Tony Robbins always says, people greatly overestimate what they can accomplish in a year and greatly underestimate what they can accomplish in 10. The human brain is not conducive to thinking that far ahead. It's kind of like the same with climate change. Everybody always thinks, oh, it's in the future. And then when it happens, they think, oh, it'll be worse for people in the future. And they just port it off because it's not immediately in front of them. And that's what the human brain does. It just sees something and goes, headphones, should I put them in? No, I don't feel like listening to music. Foundation, probably should have put some of that on, fuck. But that's what it does. So it does not think this far into the future. The very, very tiny amount of human beings that do, every time, every study that you ever read, people that write down goals, can you guess what happens? Oh, you want me to tell you because you're a dumb little 20 year old. Well, they do a lot better in life than people who don't write their goals down. And that's why you have to write down goals because it makes you at least think about the future. That's the main reason that you're writing them down because you just think, okay, at some point in my life, I want to live in that seashell house in Cronulla that just sold for $14 million, you bastards. Oh, it makes me so angry that the Liberals were in and you didn't listen to me for that last 10 years. But that is what's going to happen. You are just going to become an, uh, uh, an amalgamation of that. And because of the law of momentum, you are just going to keep grooving into that. That's the scary part. When you are ages between, there's always this, I can't remember which poet was talking about it, but they were saying the ages of between 18 and 24, that's where you're extremely malleable. It's kind of like when you see a baby between zero and six and they do those like, and they can do those goddamn exorcist moves with their arms and legs. That's your brain between them. Anything is still possible. That's why even when you just start out, you go like, oh yeah, I've got to do some like acting work or whatever. I see where it goes. And then they always say, yeah, why not? You're young. <laughs> because it actually does work like that. But after a while, your brain starts setting in and then it be it's not impossible. You can always do it, but you already have that natural limberness where you still have this childish sort of mind that is forming where you think, oh, I could be a fireman. And then when you start getting to 25, you're like, I guess it's, possible and then by 30 if you think ah fuck it it's over fireman's very easy you accomplish goal but the thing is that in that 10 years you are going to be setting yourself up for life you really are that's why it's critical critical that you have to read self-help in those years you have to surround yourself with people that you want to be like and you want to eliminate people that you do not want to be like because you will adopt their traits. 
everything, every experience that you have from that age, just know that in your head. You can have your nice little Viking sitting around in whatever those long houses were with the coal going, ooh, I'm no longer a child, between 18 and 19. 19, get out, start hunting some killer whales. Oh, no, get train killer whales to go hunt things for you. That's the smart thing to do. Work smarter, not harder, kids. <laughs> yeah, start exploiting your environment. But seriously, that's what you should be doing. You should be learning how to exploit your environment. That's what's setting you up in that 10 years. In that 10 years, you are going to become exactly who you envision in your head. Exactly. And when you go back and look at it and then you think, oh, yeah, I had vague dreams of, I don't know, being a a famous Hollywood director. Yeah, but did you put in the effort? So you didn't, did you? It was kind of this thing of, yeah, yeah, that'd be nice, but you know what else is nice? MDMA. It's really nice. And I'm a director in my imagination. And that's the same thing. Oh, no. I'm getting fat because I'm not putting any effort into my body. And it's not the same as it was when it was 21. Looks like it's no yet. That's what happens. You also start losing that natural pip and energy that you have. So while you still have the energy, you want to be doing like with the pinball, going fling, and pushing it out, as opposed to in your 30s, which then becomes the Sisyphus thing of being like, come on, let's push this pinball out now. And also on top of that, unless you've been really working on yourself and then you can become a MILF, like is my ultimate goal, is to just look like a MILF. (laughs) Is, Is, yeah, unless you are doing those things, you know, you... This is always the case, right? Like, it is easier to maintain a body that is healthy than to get back from fat. I know people that every time they go to the doctors, the doctor's like, how the fuck did you gain that much weight in a week? Because they already were fat. They're already moving down that trajectory. They're already going... So that's what I need you to understand, which is that what you are doing now, if you're in your early 20s, it is crucial. Every single minute counts. Every single minute of it does. So if you are somebody that has these big hoop dreams, you actually have to start moving towards them now. You actually have to start doing it right now. You do not have the time to spare. You have to start setting yourself up for life because it's not even about achieving the goal. It's about achieving that mindset where you are just always moving, that you're always this Duracell bunny moving towards your goals. Because if you don't start doing it now, you probably never will and your life will get sad. This is what happens. I talk about this all the time, but in your early 20s, the people that go out and party and have that grasshopper life as opposed to the squirrel, they're always going to be seen as cool for three or four years. And then after that, their life starts becoming very sad. And then when they get to my age, their life becomes really sad. And it's because they weren't doing the prep work beforehand. They weren't setting themselves up. But you need to know, I need you to write this down. You will be... The sum of all your efforts over the past 10 years. Write it down. You will be the sum of all your efforts over the last 10 years. Know that. Keep it as a mantra in your head. Know that everything that you are doing, whether it is moving you up or moving you down, it is moving you in a direction. Everything that you are doing right now is setting like gel, like uh, sorry, jelly, like the jelly where it's going in the airplane jelly little like, yeah, it's an airplane. When that, that is you, your 20s to 30s, you're in the fridge going. (coughs) Yeah. So you really, really want to be making sure that it is a flavor that you like as opposed to going lime. (laughs) You want to be doing that. How do you do that? You sign up to Jordan Shanks. I am serious about that. If you want maximum results, if you don't want to spend all that money on the self-help books that I did, I actually got a lot from the library and you can do the same thing. But if you're too lazy to go to the library, you give me the same amount of money that you give a squeezy wiper, I'll set you up. I will set you up for life. I will give you the mindset of champions. How do I know? Because I after reading 300 of these books, realize it's a bit of a pattern. You know what? I just read someone recently that was talking about them signing up to Jordan Shanks as opposed to these ones. It was kind of like they were taking in half when they started spending money on it. And this is actually true. I didn't really start enveloping self-help until I started going to the seminars. It's because once you have invested money in it, you think, okay, I'm actually going to really pay attention to this because it's actually valuable to you at that point. 
You guys seen Made in Abyss? Check it out if you have, but just be uh, prepared to be more depressed than when your mum dies. But go watch that. That's fine. That's your first tip to self-help. In fact, that's probably going to be one of the episodes in behind the paywall. Ooh, Shroud of Mystery. But the other reason is that once you start accumulating it, he was saying this, is it's kind of like these missing pieces start going in. And maybe it's because he started paying more attention or maybe it is because I keep all the primo stuff behind there. But then it started clicking in his head and then he realized, holy fuck. And he has seen so much momentum in the last month from signing up. That's what I want from you. That's what this whole channel is about. It is giving you momentum. Because whatever you are doing, you are going to want to continue doing that. And just know this, the start of everything ever is easy. So let's get you on that track. It's the hard part is actually just thinking about it and actually going uh, and moving it in that direction. But we need to just move you and just go like, okay, you want to be here in 10 years? Let's get you there. Let's make you think about it every week, many times a week, so that you actually do go where you want to go, that you actually achieve far more than you thought you would. When I started down this pathway, I thought, no way am I going to be where I am when I'm 30. I thought if I'm lucky, maybe I'll be on breakfast radio at Newcastle. I think I've done a little bit better in life than that. And it is because of the information that is behind Jordan Shanks. Up to you if you want it or not. If you're a cheapskate, just watch this. The point is, like and subscribe.